Myth of Hitler. The propaganda portrayed him as a man who stepped into history from nowhere. A man who wanted to be above everything, without ties, without ancestry. There was no place in this myth for a family. No one was to know about them. Half-brother Alois owned a bar in Berlin. Half-sister Angela ran his household. His sister Paula was engaged to a mass murderer. One nephew went to fight for his uncle, another nephew took up arms against him. I hope to take an active part in the liquidation of this man, my uncle, who has unleashed such misery upon the world. A family with skeletons in the closet Recent research has shown just why the dictator denied his origins. He was afraid that his family left him open to attack. But who were his relatives? What did the dictator think about them? And they about him? He wouldn't have argued with, you know, calling him the most vicious anti-Semite who ever lived. A, a megalomaniacal military leader who was willing to risk or sacrifice millions of lives in incredible military gambles. Um, Hitler wouldn't have argued with any of that. But the one thing he wouldn't want to, to be known as is the family man. To this day, we know little about Hitler's relatives. Many tracks have been covered. Historians Timothy Ryback and Florian Bile are trying to get to the bottom of the mystery. When you start looking at the family history, it really is quite remarkable how much there was that could be unpacked. And I think Hitler's, the only way he could deal with this was to put a lid on top of all of it and keep it hidden from public. One of the Hitler family's darkest chapters has only recently come to light. In January 1944, Hitler's secretary, Martin Bormann, received a secret dossier from Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS. It contained some highly explosive material on Hitler's family. Himmler had sent Gestapo agents to the Austrian city of Graz to investigate certain rumors. The Führer was said to have relatives there who were, in the words of the report, half-wits and imbeciles, a scandalous allegation. An SS unit tracked down the man who started the rumor and found the Feit family is indeed directly related to Adolf Hitler and does have cases of genetically inherited mental illness. One was Aloysia Feit, Hitler's second cousin. Her medical file has only recently been discovered. The head of the Institute for Forensic Medicine at the University of Munich is helping to evaluate it. Bei der Familie Veit fällt auf, dass die Geschwister auch psychisch auffällig waren. Wenn ich das mal salopp ausdrücke, in dieser Familie war der Wurm drin. Und wenn man das zurückverfolgt, dann ist auch in der Ahnenreihe eine Anzahl von psychiatrischen Auffälligkeiten, sodass man überlegen muss, ob eben in der 
Familie von Adolf Hitler anlagebedingt etwas vorhanden war, was zur, zum Ausbruch psychiatrischer Erkrankungen geführt hat. Hitler's second cousin, Aloysia Veit, suffered from schizophrenia. For nine years she was locked up in Vienna's Amsteinhof psychiatric institution. In those days the Nazi euthanasia program branded thousands as unworthy of life. Aloysia was transferred to the Hartheim Lunatic Asylum. It was a death sentence. Over 18,500 mentally ill patients were murdered in Hartheim. Aloysia Veit died in the Hartheim gas chamber in December 1940. A victim of the mass murder engineered by her great uncle, Adolf Hitler. April 1945. With the final battle raging in Berlin, Hitler was thinking about the survival of his own legend. None of his personal effects were to be left behind. He gave his adjutant, Julius Schaub, a final order, a personal one. Schaub was to empty the safes holding the dictator's private correspondence and destroy anything that could shed light on Hitler, the private citizen. There were more letters, files and photos at the Berghof, Hitler's home in the Alps. Here too, Schaub burnt all evidence relating to Hitler's family. On the 5th of May, troops of the US 101st Airborne Division reached the Berghof. After the war and the Holocaust, the victors wanted to find out all they could about the chief perpetrator. US intelligence combed the region for information and for any of the dictator's relatives. In a hotel cellar, counterintelligence officer George Allen found a suitcase belonging to Hitler's younger sister, Paula. A photograph of the dictator's mother gave the owner away. The Americans picked up her trail. Hitler had arranged for his sister Paula to be evacuated during the last days of the war. To a remote cabin on the Obersalzberg. Paula Hitler was arrested. It was hoped she could help unravel the dictator's psyche. Then they begin to ask her about her brother and how she feels about him. Um, and tears begin to well up in her eyes and you know, when the man presses her about, you know, here she is crying for Adolf Hitler, and she says to him, you can't forget he was my brother. And I think that sentence says it all about Paula's relationship to him. At her brother's request, Paula Hitler had lived for years under an assumed name, Paula Wolf. A few years after the war, she wrote her memoirs. For years, they were thought to be lost. What did she think of her brother after everything that had happened? Sie hatte da in der Nähe des Fensters einen Tisch stehen. Da stand eine große alte Schreibmaschine. Und sie schrieb an Abhandlungen im Vergleich von Napoleon und, und äh, ihr Bruder. Napoleon ist heute der Held in Frankreich und sie war der festen Überzeugung, dass ihr Bruder dasselbe auch mal erleben würde. Also nicht mehr erleben würde, sondern im Nachhinein er auch der Held von dem damaligen Deutschland ist. Paula's memoirs focus on her childhood in Linz, Austria, just after the turn of the century. She writes how, after their father died, her brother assumed their father's role. 
Already she looked up to him, even though he constantly bullied her. Time and again, I felt the back of my brother's hand across my face. He found plenty of opportunities for it. Even then, Paula's big brother thought her an embarrassment and too weak-willed. In Paula's memoirs, there isn't a word about her own involvement in Hitler's Reich. There were good reasons for her silence. After Nazi Germany annexed Austria, Paula wanted to settle in the village of Weiten. On her brother's orders, she had to live incognito. She introduced herself as Paula Wolf. Sie ist schon durchgesickert, obwohl sie es nicht haben wollte. Ne? Aber sie ist schon durchgesickert, dass sie die Schwester vom Hitler ist. She liked this house. She wanted to have it. But the owner didn't want to sell. Sie hat dann einen Brief von der Frau Wolf bekommen, also wenn sie ihr das Haus nicht verkauft, sie würde auch andere Mittel und Wege finden, um zu diesem Haus zu kommen. The threat worked. Paula got the house as a present. Her brother paid. She lived here from 1940 on, and she got engaged to Dr. Erwin Jekelius. I hab was gehört über den Verlobten, dass er Menschen also beseitigt hat, die behindert waren. Dr. Jekelius was head of the Amsteinhof Psychiatric Institution in Vienna where Aloysia Veit, Hitler's second cousin, was confined for nine years. Paula's fiancé was a willing executioner in the program of mass murder they called euthanasia. He sent over 4,000 patients to the gas chambers. Hitler's sister knew about it. Yet she still wanted to marry the doctor. She asked her brother's permission. But only Hitler would decide who was part of the family. He had Paula's fiancé arrested and sent to the Eastern Front. Erwin Jekelius was taken prisoner by the Soviets. He died in captivity in 1952. 1958. Hidden camera footage of Paula Hitler, alias Paula Wolf. She lived on social security on her own. Only a few locals knew who she really was. That same year, British director Peter Morley made a documentary about the Nazi dictatorship. He interviewed people who had been close to Hitler. Tyranny, the years of Adolf Hitler. It was the first and last television interview with Paula Hitler. I was intrigued by the fact that here was the sister of this most evil person you can ever imagine. And here was this very demure, simple, quiet lady, a total and complete contrast. I couldn't believe that this foul creature had this little woman as a sister. I mean, it was the absolute opposite of everything we've ever heard about Hitler. And she was basically, I would say, a nothing in comparison. Miss Hitler refused to answer any political questions. The original interview in German was lost long ago. Only the English voiceover version survives. Als mein Bruder Adolf ungefähr zwei Jahre alt war, ist er einmal auf eine Leiter hinaufgestiegen bis zur obersten Sprosse. Und die Mutter hat gehört, dass... When my brother Adolf was about two years old, he once climbed up a ladder to the top rung. Mother heard that he was up there on the ladder and was frightened to death. 
She was using a bit of hindsight, I think, when she talked about him when, as children, they played Red Indians, and he always insisted on being the leader of the group. You know, she felt rather proud of that. Mein Bruder Adolf war ein Indianerspiel immer der Anführer. Die anderen seine Spielkameraden. When we children played Red Indians, my brother Adolf was always the leader. All the others did what he told them. They must have had an instinct that his will was stronger than theirs. Paula saw herself as just the little sister and the criminal of the century as just her big brother. She had great respect for him. And uh, I think had I asked her about anything that might have been critical of him, I think she would have protected him. That's the feeling I got. She would have felt it her duty to protect him. Like Paula, Hitler's older half-brother Alois also survived the war. In 1945, he and his wife, Hedwig, fled from Berlin to Hamburg. Only now is one witness prepared to talk. A foster daughter of Alois Hitler and his wife, she still wishes to remain anonymous. For the first time, she talks about the dictator's brother. Es wurde uns mitgeteilt, dass es der Stiefbruder vom Adolf ist. Man hat von der Geschichte was mitbekommen. Es wurde aber nicht ausgetreten, sondern es hieß, dass wir nach außen es nie erwähnen sollten. Ich sehe ihn immer als ganz schlanken, grauhaarigen mit Schnauzbart. Das war ja witzig, dass er den gleichen Schnauzbart hatte wie der Adolf. Being Adolfs brother was no small liability. With every routine check of his papers, the surname Hitler leapt from the page. That was easily fixed. Hitler became Hiller. But Alois couldn't cast off his past. He had done well during the Nazi era. What did he think of his brother? Es war irgendwo wahrscheinlich ein bisschen Hass lieber, aber er war nicht stolz, und sonst hätte er sich in Hamburg nicht so verkrochen. The once wealthy bar owner was now a hired laborer. His denazification trial found him incriminated to a lesser degree. He had alles verloren. Den Sohn. Die Geschichte, die konnte er ja wahrscheinlich auch nicht so ganz abstreifen. Er war ein gebrochener Mensch zum Schluss. In 1945, two more relatives joined Hedwig and Alois Hitler in the Hamburg district of Fuhlsbüttel. Hans Hitler, a distant cousin of the dictator, and his wife Erna, who had worked for Alois. Auntie Erna wanted to write a book about the family. Sie war raffiniert genug, ihn auszufragen und auch nach Details zu fragen, die sie dann übernommen hatte die sie wahrscheinlich in dem Manuskript verwirrtet hat. Erna Hitler wrote a 400-page family history. It was never published. A considerable part of what I know comes from the recollections of Adolf Hitler's half-brother, and I shall start with the family history as it really happened. The manuscript starts with Hitler's childhood in Braunau am Inn. His father, a customs officer in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was proud of his work, but tyrannized over his family. The father's loud curses accompanied the howls of his son. His mother shuddered at every blow, and tears accompanied her physical pain. She went up to the attic, and with her body shielded Adolf, who was lying on the floor but she was unable to ward off his father's final blow. This difficult childhood forged a close bond between the boy and his mother. His father died in 1903 after a visit to the pub. Four years later, his mother Clara died too of cancer. The thing that summarizes Hitler's relationship to his parents best is the one sentence in Mein Kampf in which he says, I respected my father, 
but I loved my mother. In fact, the word respect is the key element there because that is what ultimately shaped Adolf Hitler's character and made him who he was. After Clara's death, Hitler went to Vienna, where he tried, unsuccessfully, to become an artist. He felt misunderstood even by his brother and his sisters. They thought he was deluding himself. When the First World War broke out, he volunteered. Not for the Austrian, but for the German army. For the first time, he denied his family. An excerpt from Erna Hitler's Chronicle. When his fellow soldiers asked him about his wife, children, parents or fiancé, he dodged the question, or just said he had no one left. After the war, he tried his luck in politics as an agitator for the radical right, stirring up hatred against Jews and against democracy. In October 1920, he went back to Vienna, so the family could see what had become of the dreamer. For the first time in 10 years, he visited his sisters. Angela Raubal, his elder half-sister, and Paula, his younger sister, were both impressed. Paula later said, His face bore the expression of a man who knew just what he wanted. What Hitler wanted, above all else, was power. The putsch that he engineered in 1923 ended in a hail of police gunfire. Hitler was put on trial. A close relation came to his defense. His half-sister, Angela, gave mitigating evidence on his behalf. Partly thanks to Angela, he got a light sentence, five years in Lundsberg prison, and after only seven months, he was free. While in prison, Hitler wrote his manifesto, Mein Kampf. This treatise, full of hatred, refers briefly to his parents, but doesn't mention Alois, Angela, or Paula at all. A Nazi party rally in Nuremberg. Sister Angela went along. She devoted herself entirely to her brother's political advancement. In a letter to relatives, she wrote, May God grant victory to his cause. In 1927, Hitler rented a chalet in his sister's name, the House Wachenfeld on the Obersalzberg near Berchtesgaden. Angela didn't only take care of the household. She brought her daughter, Geli, with her. A fateful relationship developed. Hitler felt drawn to his young niece. While he was away, campaigning all over Germany, he kept Geli a virtual prisoner. Er liebte sie als seine Nichte. Wenn auch die Menschheit nachher glaubte, er hätte ein Verhältnis gehabt, das kann ich nicht sagen. Sie war ein sehr nettes, junges Mädchen, aber sie musste ja das machen, was er wollte. Und das hat ihr wohl nicht immer gepasst. Only rarely was Geli allowed to accompany him. But the whole family came to see Hitler on the 16th of November, 1928. Angela had secured good seats. Alois took the day off and brought his wife and child along. Erna wrote in her chronicle. Alois had difficulty believing that the man receiving these huge ovations was his brother. Geli, on the other hand, was impressed by her uncle's popularity. She was totally in his thrall. But Erna later wrote, He placed such restrictions on her personal life that she could no longer break free. She didn't even trust her own mother. Her uncle's apartment on Prinz Regentenplatz in Munich. Her gilded cage.
Calling Hitler my jailer, Gehrli plunged into a severe depression. On the 28th of September, 1931, Gehrli Raubal shot herself in Hitler's flat. Her uncle was appalled. He scoured the room for a suicide note, in vain. Das hat ihn doll mitgenommen. Eingesperrt den ganzen Tag. Hat er sich nicht blicken lassen, nicht gegessen und nicht, das weiß ich. In München. A week later, the beloved niece was laid to rest in Vienna's Central Cemetery. Hitler, full of self-pity, made a grotesque cult of their disastrous relationship. Gehli's room remained untouched for years. On no account was the public to know anything. Angela stayed on with her brother, even though he admitted being partly to blame for Gehli's death. With Hitler's rise to power, the Obersalzberg became a place of pilgrimage. The cult of the Führer began to annoy the other residents. Man konnte gar nicht mehr durch und es war so viel Lärm mit den vielen Leuten. Und da hat mein Vater sich aufgeregt und hat gesagt, man kann hier nicht mehr leben. Nur noch Schwarze und Braune sieht man. A neighborhood dispute on the Obersalzberg. Angela wanted the neighboring guest house to close. She put her mind to solving the problem in her own way. I glaube, dass sie auch ihren Bruder immer wieder ein bisschen angeheizt hat oder angetrieben hat, speziell als Schusters natürlich nicht bereit waren, den Grund abzutreten. Angela turned to the powerful Martin Bormann. He had the Schuster's guest house closed down and had Karl Schuster arrested. Die haben ein Taxi geschickt, der mein Vater abholen sollte. Und da hat sich meine Mutter, das war so schlimm. Das geht mir nie aus dem Kopf. Sie hat sich vor das Taxi gestellt. Resistance was useless. Bormann forced the Schusters to leave their home. Das war fürchterlich. Wir mussten am 25. November das übergeben, also geben, durften nichts mitnehmen wie einen Koffer. Angela personally supervised the eviction. The Obersalzberg was systematically cleared of its local residents. But then the half-sister got a rival, Hitler's new girlfriend, Eva Braun. Sie wurde uns äh, nur vorgestellt, ganz flüchtig, als Gast. Sie wäre Angestellte bei, bei dem Foto Hoffmann in München. Und wir Gast wie alle anderen Gäste. Aber wir wussten ja, dass sie separat wohnt, nicht? Eva Brown's presence was a slap in the face for Angela. Calling Eva a silly goose, she complained to Hitler. Die hat ihm jeden Tag gesagt, schamst du nicht? Jetzt bist du wieder mit dem Jungen, mit dem Jungen der da unterwegs und so weiter. Dann hat er gesagt, du, das ist meins, das geht dich gar nichts an. Jetzt verschwindest du aber möglichst schnell. Angela had no choice. She left the Berghof. For the time being, she was persona non grata. in the 1932 election campaign brimmed with hatred. The more powerful the racist agitator became, the more his opponents questioned his own lineage. Someone who could help Hitler with this problem lived in Senftenegg Castle in Lower Austria. Genealogist Karl Friedrich von Frank offered to certify the racial purity of Hitler's ancestry. 
In this secret hiding place in the castle library, his files on the Hitler family's history lay undetected for decades. Over 1,200 pages document the dictator's mysterious family tree. Soon, every schoolchild in Hitler's Germany had to learn how to prove their Aryan heritage. But the Führer himself had problems with it. Hitler's own family in no way measured up to the Aryan ideal that he placed before Germany. And there are very few members of his family, when you look through there, who would have measured up to that. And the truth is, most of them would have been considered a blemish or an embarrassment. Mystery even surrounds the paternity of Hitler's own father. He was born illegitimate under the name of Alois Schickelgruber. Later, he had his father's name registered as Georg Hitler, 20 years after Hitler's death. A dubious proof of identity, but from then on, Alois called himself Hitler. His son Adolf had the family tree published anyway and wrote to the genealogist, as far as I and my sisters can tell, it is correct. His family line. But his opponents were looking more closely now and they discovered a Salomon in the family tree. The press said, that sounds Jewish. Soon, the papers were speculating about the racial fanatic's own racial heritage. A Vienna newspaper printed pictures of Jewish gravestones inscribed with names like Hitler. Actually, there is no evidence that Hitler did have Jewish ancestry, but at the time there were unanswered questions. 1933. Hitler's accession to power. From now on, he would decide what people were allowed to know about him. Erna Hitler wrote in her chronicle, Alois and Heidwig stood in the midst of the cheering crowd and marveled at what was happening. Like everybody else, they saluted in the direction of the balcony. Their great relative must have spotted them. He saluted back, and no one on that huge Wilhelmplatz knew how small the two loyal Hitlers felt. The next day, reporters visited Hitler's half-brother Alois in Berlin. Overnight, the simple waiter had become sought after. Alois wanted to take advantage of it. Ich weiß nur von einem Bruder Alois, dass er Schriftverkehr mit dem hatte. Und ich habe selbst mal auf seinem Schreibtisch beim Wedeln, beim Staubwedeln, zwei große Bogen gesehen, die waren von ihm. Und der Brückner oder der, der Krause, das weiß ich nicht, dem sagt er, der Alois will schon wieder Geld von mir. Immer braucht er Geld. Alois wanted to open his own bar in the middle of Berlin. As Alois's foster daughter recalls, the dictator helped him. Der Adolf muss ähm, ein Startkapital ihm gegeben haben, um die Gaststätte in Berlin aufzubauen und hat dann auch weiter weitere Geschenke gemacht, denn ich glaube, dass Mami auch ein Auto von ihm bekommen hat. Just three kilometers from the Brandenburg Gate on the Wittenberg Platz, Hitler's half brother opened the restaurant he called simply Alois. Word of who was in charge soon got around. Actors, journalists, and Nazi Party members were among the clientele. Die muss sehr gut gelaufen sein. Da hat sich die Prominenz getroffen. Wahrscheinlich aufgrund des Namens. Heil Hitler, Herr Hitler, is how they greeted mine host. Alois was keen to expand. His landlord, a Jew, opposed his plans. Hitler's half-brother, not forgetting to mention his name, wrote to the German labor front. According to recent laws, the era in which Jews dictate the rules of house ownership must now be at an end. 
With the backing of his powerful brother's racist policies, Alois won the dispute and expanded his business. His landlord was forced to flee to the Netherlands. Alois also led a shady private life. For years, he was married to two women at the same time. His marriage to Bridget Dowling, an Irish woman, produced a son. William Patrick Hitler, who, to the great annoyance of the dictator, loved to regale the international press with stories of Uncle Adolf. Uncle was furious and called William Patrick his most loathsome relative. Here's this nephew named Willie Hitler living in London. His uncle becomes Chancellor of Germany. Within months, Willie shows up in Berlin, um, basically playing off the Hitler name. In London, the name Hitler was a liability. In the Third Reich, it could make your career. Hitler's nephew seized his opportunities. Ich habe ihn nur kennengelernt als William Patrick Hitler und er hieß für mich Herr Hitler. Aus. Weiter nichts. Höfliche Anrede. Ich würde ihn mit Sicherheit nicht als einen intellektuellen Menschen bezeichnen. Er war kleinbürgerlich, nicht mit übermäßig guter Ausbildung und nicht mit äh, guten Kenntnissen. German culture left him cold. He had other interests to pursue in Berlin. Er hat abgelehnt, mit mir zur Universität zu gehen. Stattdessen hat er gesagt, wo kann ich ein Mädchen kennenlernen? Und daraus entstand die Idee im Gespräch, dass ich gesagt habe, ja, zum Tanztee. Wenn es um sexuelle Dinge ging, kannte er nicht einwandfreie Ausdrücke, sondern äh, schlechte Ausdrücke. Und die gebrauchte er dann. Willie had a habit of making foul-mouthed passes at women. William Patrick Hitler was the classic nephew from hell. He was the bane of Adolf Hitler's life. Um, Hitler had a lot to hide. He had a lot to be embarrassed about. Um, he had a lot to be uncomfortable about, but I don't think there was anyone in his life um, who was more of a curse upon him than Willie Hitler. Um, he was the nephew that Hitler deserved. Thanks to his uncle, Willie Hitler got a job at the Reich Credit Bank in Berlin. But this Hitler had no taste for regular work. Willie had other plans. In a letter to his uncle, he threatened to take the Hitler family secrets to the British press unless his personal circumstances improved. It was a blatant act of blackmail on Willie's part. And the most astonishing thing is that it worked. How did Willie manage to put pressure on the most powerful man in Europe? Hitler's expressed concern was that Willie had found proof that there was Jewish blood in the Hitler family veins, which would have been absolutely catastrophic for Hitler. Um, the fact was, Willie's threat, allegedly, was the fact that Willie's father, Alois, had committed bigamy and been charged with it. A misunderstanding that paid off. For six years, Willie lived a carefree life in Hitler's Reich. March 1938, the annexation of Austria. Hitler made a triumphant return to his old homeland. district of the Hitler family. Waldviertel in Lower Austria was declared the Führer's ancestral province. 
the local newsreel, the Ostmark Wochenschau, was in raptures. In der aus dem 12. Jahrhundert stammenden Marktgemeinde Döllersheim wurden die Großmutter und der Vater unseres Führers geboren. For all the Hitlers, Schmieds and Schickelgrubers, it was like getting a knighthood. Hitler Geburtstag, 1. Mai, ist dann gefeiert worden. Na ganz hurrah, ne? Die, die, seine, die, die Nazis, die Illegalen, ne? was, was glaubst du, wie die aufblüht sind? Na, die nur mehr Heil Hitler und Heil Hitler geschrien worden, ne? Ich bin so glücklich, in diesen Tagen hier zu sein, da sich ein Traum meiner Jugend und die Sehnsucht meines Lebens erfüllt hat. But the ancestors had to make way. The ancestral province became a military training ground. Thousands were resettled. Dillersheim, after it was demolished, a symbolic clean sweep in matters of ancestry. It put a stop to awkward questions about Hitler's descent. A year later, the war broke out. The dictator wanted the victory of the so-called master race. With his second wife, Hedwig, Alois had a son who wanted to fight for the cause. Hitler's favorite nephew, Heinz. First, he went to the Nazi educational institution at Ballenstedt, an elite school with military discipline. Heinz wanted to become an officer. Everyone in the school knew who Heinz was. Einer hat ein Auto, mit dem sie die Schwarz gefahren, wie die, wie die Böden durch Magdeburg durch. Und wie gesagt, die Polizei hat sie angehalten und da hat er seinen Ausweis rausgeführt. Heinz Hitler haben die dann stramm gestanden und haben weiterfahren lassen. Ja. In 1941, Heinz went to war for his uncle against the Soviet Union, the campaign of annihilation in the East. He served as a signals intelligence officer in the 23rd Artillery Regiment. His name spelt danger. Muss er jedem klar sein, wenn zu der Zeit der Russe einen Hitler in die Hand bekommt, dass es nur zwei Möglichkeiten gibt, entweder ihn als großen Gefangenen zu benutzen oder... On the evening of the 10th of January, 1942, Heinz Hitler was ordered to recover radio equipment from an army post. He never came back. Ich weiß, Mami hat immer gesagt, dass Papi auch, ähm, dass sie es eigentlich nicht wollten, dass er an die Front ging. Und ich glaube, selbst Adolf Hitler war nicht sehr begeistert davon, dass er an die Front ging. But his nephew didn't want preferential treatment. Er ist ja vermisst. Man hat ja nie eine Todesanzeige von ihm bekommen oder aus Russland irgendwo, dass er dort gefallen ist. Man weiß ja gar nicht, was mit ihm passiert ist. Das hat die auch ein bisschen zermürbt. Sie hat immer gesagt, wenn ich weiß, dass er gestorben ist, ist es okay, aber so weiß ich nichts. Heinz was taken prisoner. He was transferred to Moscow's VIP prison, Butyrka. He died in captivity after months of interrogation. His name was his downfall. In April 1945, Soviet troops reached the Waldviertel region of Lower Austria, Hitler's ancestral province. The hunt for the dictator's relatives began. The Red Army passed through this very valley. Adolf Hitler's second cousin still lives here, a farmer, Adolf Koppensteiner. For the first time, the keen accordionist discusses the curse of being related to the Nazi dictator. Vorne 
will the home do it's one name for stone. You know, the four of us are leaving them for stone, move the island. They don't do it. They don't do it. I'm a source, you feel the four of us, you feel for the loose. Der hat da über ein wenig Angst gehabt, nicht? die haben da draußen haben sie so eine große Luke gekommen, da war ich auch dabei, so ein kleiner Bauer. Und da haben sie sich versteckt gewöhnt. This was the Koppensteiner family seven days before the Red Army invaded the Waldviertel. After that, everything was to change. The orders from Moscow were collective imprisonment for all of Hitler's relatives. Die haben zwar gesagt, die Russen, es ist nur auf ein paar Tage auf eine Aussage, die haben was sagen müssen, haben sie nicht gleich gesagt, dass die niemand mehr kommen. The sentence was clear from the start, forced labor. Ignaz Koppensteiner and his wife Maria were interrogated until they finally acknowledged their so-called complicity in the Second World War. They were all in the hope that they came on day wieder. Over in New York. Why must we just name it? We came back one only thing no one is not one more a shy mother. Car and nix so stay for now. Adolf Koppensteiner was six years old when he lost his parents. It's the fear of having to pay for his great uncle's crimes. 60 years after the war's end. Only one member of the Hitler family could free himself from the dictator's thrall. His nephew, William Patrick Hitler. He left Germany before the war. In 1939, he and his mother went to New York and he changed sides. I believe that Hitler's policy in Europe will not bring any benefit to the human race at all. Willie knew how to make the most of the situation. I hope that the American people in this country will not uh, be kidded by my moustache because after all my heart is in the right place and that's the main thing. Even in exile, these Hitlers wanted to capitalize on their name. Willie's mother wrote a book called my brother-in-law, Adolf Hitler, and William Patrick went on a lecture tour to hell with Hitler. Willie wrote to President Roosevelt to say he wanted to fight against his uncle. At first, the FBI had him tailed, but then they offered support. It is der Führer's nephew, William Patrick Hitler, 32, who came here from England five years ago. This will break Uncle Schickelgruber's heart. As a member of the armed forces, I hope to take an active part in the liquidation of this man, my uncle, who has unleashed such misery upon the world. After the war, Willie Hitler went into hiding on Long Island. Now he was afraid that being related to the 20th century's greatest criminal might be his undoing. What Willie ultimately did was to change his name repeatedly, he moved residents repeatedly, and he lived in absolute terror that this past would catch up with him. And yet he called his first son Alexander Adolf. And his new surname, which we cannot give here, is reminiscent of one of Adolf Hitler's spiritual ideals. William Patrick's children will never reveal their secret. But it is hard to remain completely anonymous. Jeff Furman, a former friend of Willie's youngest son, Howard, learns Howard's true identity for the first time. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad he changed his name because I think they would have had a terrible time living virtually anywhere, unfortunately. Um. Can they escape their past? He grew out of a piece of history that he wasn't involved with. Um, then he did a tremendous job at, at choosing not to tell anybody. And yeah, from from what I know of Howard, um, I, I believe if you know, with all all of that baggage that his uh, parents brought brought with him, brought with them, I think they just came out here and became just an, an American family like like the rest of us. Two of Willie's sons are gardeners. The third is a psychotherapist. They all keep their silence. A lawyer shields them from all contact. Alle heute noch lebenden Hitler Verwandten isolieren sich. Sie beantworten keine Anfragen mit wenigen Ausnahmen und halten sich einfach fern von der Öffentlichkeit und was sie dadurch machen, sie pflegen den Mythos, den ihr Vorfahre Adolf Hitler aufgebaut hat, weiter fort und zwar zwangsläufig. A life of secrecy. Es wirkt aber so, als hätten sie den Plan gefasst, die Familienlinie aussterben zu lassen. Der älteste Sohn ist über 50, die anderen sind zwischen 30 und 40. Sie haben alle keine Familie und auch keine Nachkommen. Und das lässt natürlich schon irgendwo die Idee vielleicht erkennen, dass sie nicht vorhaben, diese Familie fortzupflanzen. A family no one wants to admit to. Angela Raubal lived incognito near Munich until her death in 1949. She left two children. Paula Hitler died without issue in 1960. Alois died in 1956. He is buried in Hamburg together with Hedwig and Erna and Hans Hitler. William Patrick Hitler died in 1987. He is survived by three sons who live in the United States. Relatives of Adolf Hitler are alive today in Austria and North America. The shadow of a criminal past will never leave them. to sex, drugs and socialism for kids. The real controversial thing was we went directly to the children. If you're dissatisfied with a certain teacher, organise a strike. The Little Red School Book. Sex. This was a battle that authority had to win. I sweated before I made my decision to release it. We wanted to change the world. Pornography, homosexuality, abortion, VD. We really wanted trouble. The book that shook the world on As It Happened, 8.30 next Friday. 